players. Today we're gonna to be talking about that virtualization, son. What you know about that? Oh my goodness, I'm really starting to get into all this. Had no idea how much virtualization is starting to tie into networking. So as you know, my profession, I do networking. I've been doing system administration, but never anything like this. Um, we're going to be talking about the ASAV, um, Cisco's new virtual firewall appliance that they are boasting so much. Basically, I think I see this with a lot of other technologies as well, is companies trying to virtualize that particular appliance. So imagine you have a hardware device, and if you already deal with VMware, if you're, for, if you're already a systems administrator, you pretty much know the concepts, right? Uh, so yeah, you can take a physical device, right? You could take many of them and basically place it on one server and virtualize it. That's, we've been doing this with operating systems for years, uh, but now it looks like the appliances for you know firewalls and IPSs and uh, the uh, traffic filtering devices, uh, things like that. Uh, even vSphere has its own virtual appliance. And it's funny, um, I have a DreamSpark account. So actually, if you have a .edu or uh, account at all uh, for email, you have a good chance of... Uh, uh, having dream spark act uh, access as long as it's you know within a few years or something like that um, but my dream spark uh, is through my school and it's from Microsoft and actually VMware had a partnership with them and I'll put the link below and you can see if you're eligible and it's awesome because I have licensing for all of this VMware workstation uh, VMware uh, you know vSphere and um, ESXi is like free, but so let me see here. I'll, I'll actually show you how I did it. And to get started, this video is mainly for just a general sense of what you can expect. Don't expect anything technical here. Um, but if you're looking to virtualize your environment in any way, especially if you're looking into GNS3 and Cisco, I have GNS3. 1.2.1 uh, Juniper works as well. I'm not sure about Juniper's virtual appliances, but if that's what you fancy, uh, by all means, do it. So I have Viral, which we'll talk about later. I have VMware ESXi 5, and then I have uh, vCenter, uh, vSphere, which is 5.5. So here's how it works. I downloaded Workstation, VMware Workstation 11. From DreamSpark. Then I proceeded to download VMware ESXi uh, 5. I put that in Workstation. I imported it into Workstation, ran it. I put, I downloaded uh, the virtual appliance that was also uh, offered by DreamSpark. I put that also into Workstation 11, and that worked just fine. And then from there, I used uh, vCenter to create within ESXi, virtualize the ASAV. So I'm virtualizing ESXi, but ESXi is virtualizing the ASAV. Why did I do it like that? Because I didn't want to, there's a long process to convert it to work with VMware Workstation, but, so, but I have the full-fledged vSphere, so it worked right off the bat from Cisco. So, however you want to do it, you don't have to do it like I did. I know my way is kind of backwards and seems like overly complicated, but honestly, it's less complicated than the other the other route, converting it back. But um, anyway, um, just wanted to kind of give you an overview of that and what's running in my environment. I have 24 gigs of RAM, and uh, it, it runs up, believe it or not. Let me show you exactly... Um, this is, if you already deal with virtualization, this is going to be so easy. Um, but it's easy anyway, even if you don't deal with virtualization. You've got your hypervisor, be it Hyper-V or VMware. And then you have the virtual switch. Let's just, for ease, um, let's just say that you have a, everything pretty much on the same VLAN. They can all talk to each other. You have one virtual switch. Uh, you provision your ports or whatever. Um, 
and you have, let's say you have like six machines or whatever, six servers, provision servers, um, and then you have the ASA uh, V, just as a, a virtual machine, just like as a server. And you can add NIC cards to it and all that good stuff, just like you would a regular server. And then you can have active standby. Um, I think I already mentioned the licensing with that. I think you could do active active too, and it's, and it's stateful. So it's awesome for lab setups, and it's also <laughs> awesome for practical use. Uh, obviously, they want you to buy the license for your use on your enterprise, but you could also use it. Uh, I, I saw some people online they actually use it for their home firewall. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? You can have a virtualized firewall, so it's like you can get rid of the hardware firewall that you probably had. Just thinking about it is just crazy to me. I don't, I don't know why. But uh, it's exciting stuff, though. So minimize that. Here's my topology, Janus 1.2.1. Um, I used to virtualize using that 8.2 or 8.3 template and QMU, QMU or whatever it's called, QMU. And it was really slow, and it worked some of the time. And it it when I wrote to the memory of the ASA, it worked some of the time, and it was so annoying. But now everything is running in VMware, and VMware is so reliable. And this is a uh, image made by Cisco itself, so um, you, you can't really go wrong. Or it's a you know OVA file made by Cisco. So and then the OVA file, of course, you import that uh, to the um, a virtualization application of your choosing. Now, I'll just show you uh, a quick kind of tour. So this is basically what it looks like. Uh, the ASAP, I think I saw, you saw it in the beginning. I basically named it Titan, they do a show run. I mean, if you just look at this, great. Now, watch, be mindful of your RAM. It takes up about two gigs of RAM per device. So if you're running like an active standby kind of thing, just be mindful of that that's going to take up four gigs minimum. And then you just have your basic interfaces. You see how the security levels, <sighs> different IP addresses. And I did basic things like, uh, you know, named, uh, put a network object for, you know, outside and inside. ICMP stuff so I can start pinging, uh, permit ICMP to the actual interface and through the router using an out access list basic stuff trace route had to decrement the TTL of course you know firewalls in general they will not decrement TTL by default you have to sort of put that in there put that in the class map um, and you can see uh, I'll show you here set connection decrement dash, dash TTL and of course after that you'll probably have to set up some access lists depending on how you want to you know where you want the, the ability for people to trace route through your router and again this is all typical lab environment stuff but honestly I recommend you allow trace route um, at least from the inside uh, for troubleshooting purposes when things go wrong in your production network so there, I don't there's not nothing wrong with that um, so yeah see I mean look how similar it looks to an ASA so I, I'm I'm really happy Cisco you know, went down this route virtualization, but I feel like they, they, you know, they probably needed to, uh, because their stuff was getting pretty dated. I mean, VMware, it's crazy. They came out with that NSX, uh, VMware NSX. And if you, I think it's NSX, if you read up on that, it's very interesting. Um, I don't know too much about it. I just know that, you know, VMware administrators can start provisioning, you know, VLANs and security on their own which is amazing. That means the VMware guy, not only now does he have to know about Windows and VMware, but now he has to know a lot about networking as well. And on the other side, engineers, network engineers have to know a lot about virtualization and the server stuff. So it's all like, you have to know a lot about a lot now because technology is always changing, it's always getting more competitive. And that's why, you know, there should never be a day where you don't learn something. So, uh, Pretty interesting stuff, basic GNS3 stuff, you know, got the iOS right here. Now, the only thing is that I guess I've heard of this IOU thing. I haven't tried that out, but switching virtualization is just 
or switching emulation, I should say, has been sort of one of those things that uh, is just not there yet or not there at all. And actually, I don't know if you heard about this, but this is uh, uh, Cisco Viral, and this is their website. And I actually purchased the academic version because at a .edu address or whatever. And, you know, I, I, I like it. It's okay. And this is it right here. But it's just, it's not as intuitive as GNS3. And it, the funny thing is, is that GNS3 is from a bunch of like, you know, pro, these, these, these uh, programmers were doing it like kind of like pro bono. And I know that it's more of a company now than it was back then. But because there's so much user input, I think that's what makes GNS3 a better program in general. I mean, this program looks like it was made in Java 5 like in the 90s or something. Like, look at this. What is this? This looks like a slightly smarter, slightly higher IQ version of Cisco Packet Tracer. And if you if you don't know what Packet Tracer is, honestly, it's helped me get CCNA level security or uh, uh, certifications. <laughs> um, but uh, it doesn't really go beyond that, in my opinion. And um, yeah, look at this. I mean... I, I know that looks aren't everything, but it took me forever to figure out how to actually remote into a device, right? And I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that likes to download stuff, right? And then just play with it, all right? I do look at a lot of documentation, but honestly, I like figuring things out on my own, it, or try at least try to. Uh, most of the time, it doesn't really work out because some of the stuff I do try to look into is pretty complex. So... You know, I was right-clicking this bad boy, and hey, look, you figured there'd be a connect, but no, you know what you actually have to do? You have to hit start, right? Then you have to, you'll be in design mode. I know I'm in simulation mode right now. You have to hit start, and then it takes you over to design mode, and then you actually have to click on one of the, right-click, it doesn't say that now, but you basically have to right-click this and get this, there's something that says, like, Telnet to, on the console port. I'm like, how can you tell that on a console? But anyway, it's just, it, it's ridiculous. And connecting these nodes, it automatically connects and automatically, I'm like, why can't I choose my interface? It's, I don't know, man. And then you got this auto net kit thing that I think is actually pretty awesome, but I haven't gotten into it. Um, it basically can automate your network so you don't necessarily have to worry about, um, uh, you know, configuring every single you know command for bgp as numbers and all that good stuff so i like that uh feature it's just that i'm not sure if i'll ever get into this apparently you can um also connect it to you know cisco 1pk and you know if you got python and java and stuff like that which me personally i am learning on how to script using 1pk uh, Tickle, Python, Java, all that good stuff. So I, it's just not enough time in the world, I feel like. <laughs> just not enough time in the world. But uh, yeah, it's all interesting stuff. And that's all I really wanted to show you guys. So if you're thinking about getting into virtualization, I know this video is probably way longer than it needs to be. But if you're thinking about getting into networking, I su highly suggest you immediately download a hypervisor of some sort. Hyper-V is actually free. You just have to have the server license. Um, uh, yeah, that's, I, I would say Hyper-V, ESXi is free as well. Um, and they're both super easy to use, super easy to use. Um, GNS3, I'm not going to lie, it's a huge learning curve. At least for me it was. I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you it's easy. It's easier than it used to be, uh, but there's a lot of, Things that I go in there now that I do naturally, but I was not able to do a, a few months ago or, or if even a few years ago. I've been using GNS3 for at least three years. Uh, so a lot of what's out there doesn't really come as a surprise to me. I'm usually able to uh, fix an issue, um, and they have a great knowledge base as well. So um, that's it, guys. Uh, next video, I might do... A video on 1PK and Java programming and maybe uh, depends on how far I get personally on that uh, I've been doing a little bit of it lately but yeah
we'll see what the next video is. And I'll try to put out more. I know I've, I've just been super lazy for the holidays. And I told myself I wasn't going to use the holidays excuse. I'm, I've just been super lazy. So, later guys.